Okay. In the previous session, we talked about the alternative statement. Let us now look at the repetitive state statement, which is the last and final building block of a program. We have so far seen assignment and alternative statement. Let us look at the repetitive statement. So let's take there are different forms of the repetitive statement. Uh, let us take the form while B do S. Okay. Let me say end while. If you want to write it in a like program, so it's while B do a set of statements S over here and while. Now, S can be a compound statement or it can be a, a simple statement, a single statement. So, we want to draw this pictorially. We're talking about a, a flow diagram B. Then uh, we are uh, looking at if this expression B evaluates to true. There is some P over here. Input assertion that we start with. Then if it evaluates to true, B evaluates to true, then you execute the statement S and go back. Okay. If, we, if B evaluates to false, then you exit out of the while block. Now, uh, let us take a very simple uh, example. Let's say I have uh, sum is assigned the value of zero. I is assigned the value of dollar. Um, and so, and while I less than sum n do sum equal to sum plus i. Okay. i is assigned the value of i plus 1 and 1. Here I am assuming that n is greater than 0. Something like this. <coughs> So these two statements, for example, are simply, again, a compound statement or a composite statement, a sequence of simple statements, assignment statements. So you can use the composition rule to prove the, to assert them. So now the question is, what is it that we want to show? We want to show that in, uh, so what we want to show is P, we need to prove this P is present as the input assertion while B do S and while and after the while is when you exit the while an assertion Q must be true. So this is the precondition, this is the first condition. Now let us look at this while block in a little more detail. <clears throat> Let me add some more uh, symbols to this. Suppose I have P here. B is your ex Boolean expression which is being evaluated. And let's say there's a point A over here. And P is what was true before we entered the while block. If it is true, let us say this is a point C. And we'll see what happens is point C then S is executed, then again it converts back here and if it evaluates to false, then it exits, let's call this point B and let's see what we can assert at each one of these points, okay? At the point A, when you start, for example, 
you can assert that P is true. Now, at the point C, so what does it mean? Depends upon the Boolean expression of P evaluated. It's evaluated as true, so we can assert P and B is true. Okay? Then, when it comes back here, it's entering the loop again. Therefore, it should again, that means what here? When you go through this loop, again, P is true. And once again, it looks at the value. What I'm saying is, you started off with P, evaluated B, and P and B are true. P and B are true means P is also true and B is also true. So after the execution of the statement, you find that P is still true. Okay? Then you go back, then re-evaluate P and so on. What happens here at B now? We see that P is false. So what happens, uh, B is false. So you can say that P and not B is true. Okay? Notice that P is still true over here also. Okay? Even when it has exit exited the program. All right? Now, P, so what this means is that P holds that P holds at A and also after an iteration. Okay. P and B is reached whenever whenever C is reached. Okay? Wonderful. Whenever C is reached. All right? Now, what happens at exit? At exit, P and not B is reached. At So, what is the meaning of the while statement now? What is very interesting is that notice that P is true over here, P is true over here, P is true over here, and P is also true over here. Okay? Because P and not B is required for it to exit. <clears throat> so, what we are saying is P and B. S, interestingly, leads to P again. And P, then we can infer P while B. We'll tell you what P is over P in a little while. Do S end while P and not B must be Notice that P is true initially. P and B gets into the loop. The statement is executed. Then again, P is still true. So we can assert that the input assertion by B do S and Y can be asserted if P and P and not B is true. So clearly P is true if you look at it in this flow diagram over here. P is true here, P is true here, P is true here, and P is true here. So P is called the loop invariant. Loop invariant and this corresponds to the invariant property of the segment of code. <clears throat> what does P hold? P holds the state of the program
after each traversal through the loop. Okay. This is, as I already mentioned, it's called the loop invariant property. Now, let us look at this program that we wrote a little bit earlier. Loop like this. We said sum is initialized to, let me repeat it again. Have a variable sum is initialized to zero. A variable i, which is initialized to zero. And then we say, while i less than n do sum equals sum plus i, i is assigned the value of i plus 1 and 1. So what we notice that, what is it that we need to show that p and b execution of this the statement again implies the loop invariant. So we need to find out what this loop invariant is all about. What is a good loop invariant? A good candidate for the loop invariant is k equal to 0 to i, okay. the sum of the uh, integers k going from 0 to i. So initially sum is 0, i equal to 0, therefore this sum is 0, and this if this is p, this is valid. Okay, so before you enter the loop, it's valid. Then you have sum is equal to sum plus i. Okay, then again at the end of the loop, it is valid. But there's a problem here. At the end of the loop, is it still valid? Because i is becoming i plus 1. Therefore, a better loop invariant or more correct loop invariant is k equal to 0 to i minus 1. So this is the loop invariant for this program. Now, when I come out of this loop, what happens at the end of the loop, i is going to become n, but it holds the sum of k equal to 0 to n minus 1, which is the value of i minus 1. Okay? And the loop invariant still holds even when the condition, which is b over here, is untrue. Okay, so this is what the loop invariant is all about. So when you want to prove uh, the uh, correctness of uh, repetitive statements, we must show that before you enter the loop, the loop invariant is true, and when you exit the loop. Also, the loop invariant is true. When you're inside the loop, too, the loop invariant 